welcome to the Steelers Realm Podcast. And now, here are the boys of Steelers Realm, New Jersey Dev, JT, and the famous TA. Well, hey, it's, hey, Steeler Nation, welcome back to another episode of Steelers Realm Podcast. I'm your host, JT, and Steelers Realm Podcast is powered by Riverside.fm, the official high-definition audio and video recording tool of Steeler Nation. Uh, like I said, I'm JT, one of your hosts, and uh, looking forward to our episode tonight. We've got a little special mock draft coming up for you, and oh, by the way, uh, we have uh, CJ sitting in, not Dev, so we're going to change that. But anyhow, on the other side uh, of the border, just flew in from Boston. It's the famous TA. What's up, brother? JT, I am excited as all get out about tonight, man. I can't, I, I gotta, I gotta cool my jets a little bit. So we are going to put. Uh, a nail in that coffin on the picks of what's going to happen and to help us out. Obviously uh, we have CJ joining us again tonight. CJ, welcome. Good to see Listen, you again, I'm brother. Really Thanks for having me back. I'm excited to hell for Thursday. Um, it's Joel and B's world. We're just living on it. You <laughs> see the shot he hit. Holy shit. To win the game. We'll go from there. But let's focus on the NFL today. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk talking football tonight. So, um, you know, lots to dig into here. Uh, before we get into that, um, something a little exciting too. We have a new host, and uh, you know, new sponsor too. So, we're going to send a, a little plug out there. Uh, support for Steelers Realm Podcast is brought to you by Manscaped, who is uh, the best in man's below-the-waist grooming. Gentlemen, Manscaped offers precise, precision-engineered tools for those family jewels. Manscaped recently launched the Ultimate Men's Hygiene Bundle, which we all have. Thank you, Manscaped and Drew. Uh, the performance package and... Uh, Join over 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with this exclusive offer for you. You can get it at 20% off and free worldwide shipping uh, by using the code Realm20 at Manscaped.com. There it is right below. Look down the below. 20% off at Manscaped.com and uh, use the code Realm20. So with that said, thank you. JT, do you know why they need to do that? 20% off? No, not the 20% off. Why they got to get Manscaped? Do you know why they got to do that? Oh, absolutely. You got to keep those things shiny, man. You know, no, it's not. No, 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 it's no. It's not just. Because your balls will thank you. They're going to wake up in the morning and they're going to be just all shiny and perky. And they're going to say, thank you, JT. for Well, you know, of the, the, ones balls who aren't, you. The, the balls aren't the only ones that will thank you. This isn't just well, for men are. only, guys. Yeah, but you know they're, they're the fam they're the family jewels, JT. They are you the gotta family take care jewels. of the family jewels. You out of all people ought to know that. In case those of you who don't know JT like I do, he's got like 22 kids. He's like the <laughs> guy who lives in the shoe, who like old Mother Hubbard went to the cupboard. His cupboard's not bare. And you know why? Because he uses manscape. That's why he keeps reproducing. Listen, thanks to Manscaped, I got no complaints last night. And even <laughs> if I did, I don't think I would have listened to it. So, hey, I'd like to thank them for that. At least. So there you go. There you go. Best that five minutes of your life. <laughs> that, that, more like 30 Wait, seconds. But I was going to say, I think you gave him too much credit. 30 seconds. I kind of agree with you, CJ. The way that you kind of can went in there all coy and stuff, like, you know, hey, thanks, Manscape. You know, you helped me <laughs> out. I mean, be proud, be loud, man. Those things were probably like slippery, like throwing marbles up against the wall. Yeah, something like that. Okay. <laughs> all right. 
<laughs> Make sure to check out the link in our podcast and our social media posts where you're seeing our podcast or hearing our podcast. So make sure to check them out. Uh, and we'll be putting this up periodically throughout the episode. So check out Manscaped uh, for your uh, the finest in men's grooming. So anyhow, guys, it is this time of the year. Um, what time you know, is that, JT? Along, along with time to, time to mow and trim, uh, it is also draft time coming up, which means that the week before is our annual mock draft. And so uh, we're going to dive into that. But before we do that, some breaking news. Um, do, 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 in, the uh, the offseason stuff is still going on. Uh, first up on the agenda was uh, we re-signed a former Steeler again. Marcus Allen signed for 2.4 mil on a one-year tender. Uh, we also had another signing TA. Before we before we go that, let me ask you something. Is everybody excited about Marcus Allen coming back? I mean, this is like his fifth year. I mean, he was safety. He's now linebacker. I mean, he's a Penn State boy. I mean, I get all of that stuff. And, and nobody else decided to pick him up. He's just, you know, hey, this is before the draft. I better go ahead and sign my tender. Are we excited or happy about this? I mean, what's our actual feelings about Marcus Allen coming back? I think I put it best in the group text. Here's a guy that's coming back. Here's a guy that still sucks. <laughs> like He knows the playbook, but he still sucks. <laughs> he knows the playbook. I think that was the Great. verbatim. There. <laughs> Whatever. So right. yeah, my thoughts, my thoughts to you, it, 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 they're they're just kind of like filling up depth here, and then well, the rest will take out throughout the draft and the rest of the off season before the season begins. And uh, you know, there's there's just as much activity after the draft well, as there is beforehand. So here's what I'm thinking, JT: at two point five million dollars, if you just need a tackling dummy for training camp by god call me up mike i'll come out i'll strap on a pair of shoulder pads and a helmet if you're gonna pay me 2.5 million for a year buddy i'll be the best looking guy with the manscape if you know what i mean i do what you know what you mean um so who was the other signing oh this more depth was the, oh Oh, more depth. Well, I don't know if it's more depth or if it's a replacement. We might have to get into this, but man, we were we picked up a smoking deal, hot deal, straight off, fall off the back of the truck, Miles Boykin from the Ravens. Now, you know, I'm not quite sure where I stand on this, to be honest with you, JT. I mean, he came out of North or I keep saying North Dakota. It's actually Notre Dame. He was with the college girls, him and, you know, that other guy we have on our team. What's his name? What's his name from? I can't remember. Oh, Chase. Him and Chase came from North Dakota. Oh, I'm sorry. Notre Dame. I'll get it right. That ND, you know, that's this is the ND thing. Anyways, long story short, you know, is he a product of the Lamar Jackson I'm a, I'm a quarter. I mean, a running back. I mean, a quarterback. A, a running back. I mean, offense. I, I don't know, but his stats are horrible. He was injured most of last year. In college, he was a stud. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna deny that. It might be a steal of a pickup from the wa waiver wires. I'm just not quite sold on it. I think we should have paid James Washington at least another fifty bucks so he can put gasoline in John Deere so he'd be happy. To <laughs> Texas. At least you know well, what you have I, with James Washington. Right? The inability uh, to separate and get open. Um, in contested catches, he was fine. I'm not crazy about the signing at this point of free agency. It is what it is. Meh. Eh. Yeah. I've, that's a meh. You can do better. You can do worse. You know what I mean? <laughs> kind of one of those deals. Again, are we just kind of filling up space here? For depth yeah yeah that's my opinion again mike 330 601 6966667 call me for a hundred thousand dollars 
I'll be at training camp. <laughs> Actually, we can all be there for free now. Come back Ooh. to La Trib, baby. Good Get point. Here. That's right. That's right. We're back to Which La Trib. Cool with that. <clears throat> so, hey, you know, yeah, I actually of, was... Go, go ahead, man. I'm on. sorry. I was going to say, some some of my, like, favorite moments, you know, growing up as a Steelers fan was, you know, heading to training camp in La Trobe. Um, I remember I was, like, seven or eight. You know, there's Tommy Maddox signing a bunch of stuff. I don't know any difference. And he's doing this thing, throw me this, give me this, give me this. And I, was, I had a football. I was in like the second round. Threw it. Uh, no shit. Him right in the fucking shoulder. <laughs> so you can blame me for that disappointing injury ridden year that led us to Big Ben though. So blame me, mm. thank me, do whatever. Oh, CJ, thank you. You bestow my heart, man. Without <laughs> you, we wouldn't have had a Hall of Fame quarterback. Sorry, Tommy it, Gunn. It was the shoulder <laughs> industry that <laughs> lasts a lifetime. It, it it was it was a lot of fun as a kid, like going through like their combine that they had and stuff like that. And you know, I'm excited to go back this year for different reasons. But you know, I'm I'm happy to see that we're progressing back to where we were. It's free Are you before COVID. Normalcy. Yeah, normalcy. <laughs> normalcy. <laughs> You know, I was worried that we wouldn't get back there, to be honest. It's a pretty big hole. Yeah. I might just say, you know what? I'm not going back to that shit. Well, I I want to stay. Not that it's Hey, St. Vincent College is an amazing place. Oh, it is. called a shithole. It's not. It's not. That's some good pictures. Dev and I hooked up down there one day, went around, took some pictures inside the church. And, um, of course, nobody was there. But, yeah. Oh, it's a great place great place to go and i'm glad everybody's going back there too because it just um it was a way for the fans to connect with the players and vice versa and uh i I thought it was good for the team to get together like that and gel away from town so to speak so congrats steelers i'm glad they're going back absolutely because now we're it's tradition i mean i don't know if you've seen the our rooney little speech about it but he's excited hey when we're there we do good i mean i can't argue with you we do good and i mean it's all part of bonding and i think that that's something that this team might have been missing in the last few years i agree with that and it's it's good it's good for the town of latrobe from an economic standpoint that money you know, money, money money exactly absolutely Absolutely. Exactly. Yeah, they so took, happy. took a big hit last couple of years. Yeah, hey, I'm just glad they survived. Yeah, no doubt. And no doubt. Actual, real, true, live Friday night under the lights. That's what I'm looking forward to. That's cool. That is an event. If Steeler Nation, if you haven't done that, you can work your way back to Lake Trobe, Friday nights under the lights, the Lake Trobe High School football field, uh, it's it's the best. It's the best. Um, usually some of the you know, the major major networks are there. I remember uh, seeing Merrill down there under the ESPN tent down in the corner. Well, wasn't it right before right before COVID hit? I mean, we were actually on ESPN. I think they actually televised it live that year for the first time. Oh, really? Yeah, I just remember that. seeing them down there under the. It's been years, been years since since we were down. Yeah, no, I'm almost pretty positive that right before COVID hit, the last year we were there, ESPN actually televised Friday Night Under the Lights live. Nice, nice. That was the first time ever. As far as a nationwide show goes. Sweet. Good time. So, hey, exciting. Exciting news. Well, what do you think, guys? Should we get into it? We got, what, um, looks like we, we got getting eight, into? eight picks. Let's get into our mock draft. Um, 
So picks do we have, JT? Did you get us an extra one somewhere between now and then? Oh no, no, no. I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm thinking rounds. We uh, we actually have one round off. So there's seven seven picks. That doesn't. Oh, we're taking like... a break. Yeah. How does that work? Fifth, we, we, fifth round is that nap? Is that nap time? We got nap Might time well. this year in the draft. You can call it whatever you want to, TA. <laughs> <laughs> T.A. can take a nap on the fifth pick. All right. For the fifth pick. That's, for the fifth that's pick. Bush latte. That's Bush Latte time. T.A. takes a nap. <laughs> so, with that said, let's go in. There. And um, let's see. With a random... We're going to give CJ the first pick. So, Are you sure? with the first pick what? of the NFL draft, picking number 20th. Well, there has been a trade. CJ, there has been, been a trade. trade. Did you see that? I saw that. Oh, my God. I can't believe it, JT. You're not going to believe this. Wait, wait. We breaking just, news? It was breaking news. We just traded Deontay for Debo. Samuels with the San Francisco and still kept our first round pick. Can you believe that stuff? I'm seeing it everywhere. I can't believe it. I mean, ESPN, Fox, ABC, EBSPN. I mean, it's all out there. We just picked up Samuel Debo or Debo Samuels. However you want to say it for Deontay. Is that a fair enough trade, CJ? Yeah, probably mortgaged a third round or a fifth round, or maybe threw in Devin Bush. Yeah, we might. So, in other words, we got to wait for Mel Kuyper to come back and tell us what the details. I are. need to hear. I need to hear Mel's opinion on this one. Oh, I, because I heard knows all. I heard Garoppolo's coming with it, with the package. Wait, wait is, a second. We is, got Garoppolo is, and Debo for Deontay. Yes, Score. <laughs> Yes, you heard it here first, Steelers Nation, right here. That's what's happening because that's what the rumor is going to be come tomorrow morning. Yep, exactly. And it's, it's, they're going to let it ride high and hard. And so for that, Steeler Nation, we are wrapped up our mock draft for this week. So <laughs> have a great night and we'll catch you next time. <laughs> No, no, seriously. Okay. Um, well, there you go. There's the first pick. So what do we just like? Compensatory pick? So we got to put up a Debo now or what? Oh, no. We got like three compensatory picks in the first round just because we did that. Isn't that the way the NFL works? <laughs> Something like that. Uh, I'm just sick and tired of the rumors. Like, I'm ready. I'm ready for the draft to get over with. I'm ready for free agency to get over with. I'm ready to go to Latrobe, go to St. Vincent's College, college, watch some football, watch some practice, hear some actual reports, blah, 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 blah. You know what? And you know what? I'm going to touch a little bit on this Debo thing that kind of rubs me the wrong way. This dude is a focal point of that offense. They have said, if this dude comes in and negotiates with them, they'll give him the sun, the moon, and the stars. And he just doesn't want to. Maybe he's tired of paying taxes in California. <laughs> Can't blame the guy. But Can't blame him for living something, there. And it, it makes you wonder. It makes you wonder about the Trey Lance pick and what they saw as players and how they feel about Garoppolo. Now we've seen Tyree Kill give up money to, well, not give up money. We've seen Tyree Kill leave Patrick Mahomes. But it's, it's, this is something that's a little different where you have a star of an offense that just says, I don't want to be here anymore. They want to pay him. But he's like, eh, I don't want to be here. Well, now, CJ, let me ask you this, and you bring up a good point, and, and, and this is something that, you know, before we get on, is this a byproduct of COVID? 
Because let's face it, the last two years, especially last year, was not great at all. I mean, we have our own Juju Smith-Schuster. So now you have the Devontae Adams, you know, signing with the Las Vegas Raiders. And now everybody is trying to jump on this extra money that the NFL is pushing around. Is this a, a byproduct of COVID and the me generation? Hey, I want mm. paid. I don't care how I perform. I've performed already. I want paid now. I, I I do think it's a byproduct of COVID, but in a different way from what you're saying is, is when COVID hit and the cap shrunk, right? Whereas last year, Juju was looking for a deal, okay? There was no money to be had because players wanted to be retained. Well, players had to be retained at a smaller level. Now the salary cap is back on growing. Par. It's back so on par. They're, yeah, it's, it's back to where it should be, and there's more money there. And we've seen the the Diggs contract, the Adams contract, and these fourth year wide receivers that are in that don't have that fifth year option. Just like, just like what we've seen here in Pittsburgh that they want paid and they want paid big bucks. Now is, are they justified in it? I don't know. It's kind of like a bubble. Now Debo should get paid. That no, dude. Wait a stop, stop right there for a minute. And I'm going to ask an old school guy, JT, a contract is a contract. The cat is under a five-year contract. Should he or should he not demand more money or be honorable of putting out his talents for that contract? Is a man's Uh, word still a man's word and is a handshake still a handshake? Well, apparently not. If you're a superstar, apparently not. Apparently you, a contract is not worth the paper it's written on anymore. And, uh, you know, I have a big, being an old school guy, I have a, I have a problem with that. Um, and this seemed to start a few years ago and I'm trying to recall who was the first player that, uh, wanted to, uh, was it from the jets? Was it a player from the jets? For some reason I was thinking somebody there, but what is that? Okay. Now somebody's Maybe making, more than, it might've been, didn't he sit out? Or he wanted more yes. money? Darrell Rivas. Yes, he kind of started and snowballed all this. And the reason you remember that is because he is a pit byproduct. Yeah. That's and right. he wasn't the first one. It's been going on. T.O., next question with Drew Rosenhaus. But T.O. is so on so forth. At 50 years old, T.O. is I back. I don't. He's not back. He's not back. He's <laughs> not back. That. that does not count. I, I might be in the USFL before Careful. the week's we over with. We are flirting with the mute button there, TA. Keep it up. <laughs> no. Uh, I'll my, mute your my point, my point is, <laughs> my point is, it's sad to see someone that was drafted by San Francisco succeed with San Francisco. San Francisco wants to pay him. And he's like, Fuck it, trade me. But uh, you know, well, well, unfortunately, it's common, this, eh? yeah, right. Yeah. We don't want hostages. We want volunteers. And you know, it might sound corny in another Tomlin's Tomlinism, but you know, he's absolutely right. I mean, at what point do you protect the integrity of football? and say you're playing it for the love of the game. But, of course, the players are going to tell you it's a business. Coaches are going to tell you it's a game. When the coaches tell you it's a business, the players are going to tell you it's a game. I mean, it's back and forth, and we've talked about this from North Dallas Sporty because that's the best line ever. Every time BAU tell me it's a business, you say it's a game. Every time I say it's a game, you tell me it's a business. 
I don't think we're ever going to see the difference in this because it's been going on for decades. Completely agree with that. Yeah, and once somebody once somebody gets more money than the other guy who thinks he's better than, uh, it will continue. We have a player on the team going through that right now. Now we do. We traded him for for Debo, but nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> you know what we showed him me, didn't we <laughs> we did you know what scares me the most about this though is i have seen rumors and everything else and i hope the nfl stays stays tough that the guaranteed contracts you know players now are wanting more guaranteed money they want to be more like the mlb and the nba and i think that's what's made the nfl so special is because look your contract's not guaranteed you're paid to perform and we've seen in those other leagues when you're paid to play all of a sudden oh my goodness i nicked my nuts with my manscape i can't play today or oh did you see my ingrown toenail it hurts i'm sorry coach i have to sit i don't think the nfl can afford that I think that the NFL needs to stay strong on this and not let the players take control of the asylum. Well, I, 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 I agree with that. And I think the first thing that they'll cite is the Ben Simmons saga in Philadelphia, which was an absolute fucking joke. This guy got handed the sun, the wind, the moon, the earth, the whatever. and just mentally mental health is a serious thing i'm not dismissing that but he just can't play but he can he can practice in new york and he's he's slated to play he was the first one it was a rod who really created all of this a rod got that huge contract from the yankees coming from texas and then turn around, played one great solid year, and then boom, I'm hurt. hurt. I'm hurt. Oh, I'm getting married to J-Lo. I'm sorry, I'm on my honeymoon. We're going to the playoffs. I can't make it. I mean, well, he never it. made it. I mean, he never really played in the playoffs. Well, they were just better whole, off just sending him home. And that's my whole point. He got paid millions of dollars to do absolutely nothing. Thing. Is that what we want to see the NFL go to? Myself personally, no. I want to see you guys out there on the gridiron. You know, I understand it's a tough sport. I understand it's a physical sport. But there's still some of us that it's the love of the game. You players are fortunate enough to be played for the love of the game. I already told you, you need a practice dummy. Pay me two point five million dollars. I'll strap a helmet on and a pair of shoulder pads. Mm. I'll come out there you and get hit for two point five million. And I want I want to close this up with a question, you guys, and then we can get into the mock draft. Listening to what you're saying, and there's a lot of long shots in the NFL. Would either of you guys be opposed to fifth, sixth, seventh round draft picks? having two years of guaranteed money because their chances of making a second contract is so slim. So slim. Yes, I and have I a know problem it opens with that. Up. Yes, I have a problem with that. I want to see you perform. Can you imagine giving Carlos Davis a guaranteed contract? <laughs> what has he done for What about for us? Percy Harvin? <laughs> There's another prime example. <laughs> I mean, I, so no. I just proved no, my own. No, Artie no, Burns. Wrong way. Artie Burns. Hey, let's exactly. move to the mock. Yeah, <laughs> all right. We're off to the mock. <laughs> so you got crushed on that one, CJ, unfortunately. <laughs> I thought it had a good idea, and then I thought it like Percy Harvin, the third, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm <laughs> so wrong. Can we move? Because let's move I'm this quickly. Let Corleus go. I mean, because Corleus, <laughs> I love me a left left footed punter. And Corley has come on strong at the end of the year. And I was hoping he would come back to camp. 
unfortunately. Well, Belichick he even signed... Belichick even said he likes left left footed punters because the ball spins different and it's harder it, to pick up. And there's a it chance it does. It does, CJ. It does. Think about it. I mean, Bill isn't where Bill is because he's just some rum dumb. Bill is a student of the game. He understands the X's and O's and in between the lines. I mean, why do you think you've never heard the Patriots classify themselves as a 4-3 or a 3-4? Because they're not. It's whoever that team is playing is what defense I will play you against. And Mm -hmm. you want me to be a run and shoot, run and gun, RPO? It doesn't matter. Bill will design it to play against your team where your weaknesses are. And I'm sorry, Steelers Nation. I, I, I hate the guy. I hate Hoodie. But God damn it, I have to respect him as well, too. Because he is a mastermind. And I would like to think that Tomlin, over the years, has picked up some of this to take us back to number seven. And with that... You know, none of us played well enough, him included. None (laughs) of us coached well enough, me included. Yeah. Hey, JT, you don't have to bring up the tape about how I played, okay? (laughs) It wasn't perfect last night, but it could have been better. Anyway. It could have been better. All right, we've digressed. Steelers Nation, we're here to bring you the greatest, the best, the most important mock draft you are ever going to hear. Forget ESPN. Forget about Fox. Forget about Walter Football. What you are going to hear from us tonight is by far the greatest, the most excellent draft of all times for our Steelers in seven rounds right here and jt let us know who's on the board all right guys if you are ready in the first round pick number 20 for the pittsburgh steelers cj is on the board the pittsburgh steelers select center from Iowa, Tyler Linderbaum. Oh, what CJ? Wait, whoa, 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 whoa! What does that mean for our boy Mean Green? Well, Kendrick? he goes back to he he goes back to a, as you said, practice squad dummy, or more <laughs> than likely he shifts to guard. So you're telling and, me he did not pass the Pouncy training camp? Again, I, I think it's hilarious. I think it's hilarious that these athletes post their workouts on Instagram, their Facebook, Twitter, and all that stuff. You're working out. Congrats. You're doing my job. You're doing your job. Should I start posting, you know, <laughs> snippets from the office each day on Twitter, filling out a form? I'm not watching it. <laughs> Making CJ, a call. By the way, just so you know. <laughs> Exactly. I know where no, you are. but were. anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty interesting. Anyway, Linderbaum, he's the best center in the class. Um, 6'2", about 300. He's got good size. Um, I really think he's a plug-and-play guy. Um, he can come in right away, um, start, solidify the offensive line. And he has uh, he has good potential uh, with his skill. Um, in a normal class, um, I think he has top fifteen. Now it was weird, and I I and to preface this with everyone, I used the PFF simulator for all my picks. He was available. I think he's going to get sooner than this. I really do. But in this case, he fell, and he was available at twenty. And I think at 20, he's a no-brainer. All right, GT, JT, fire it up. All right. For uh, round one, pick number 20, famous TA picks for the Steelers. 
CJ, I disagree. Tyler or Lundbung in any other year is no Creed Humphrey. And the most important pick that we need to have because everybody is picking it for us, JT, is Desmond Ritter. We got to go quarterback. <laughs> however, however, JT, that is not where we need to go. And the fans go crazy. (laughs) Actually, I'm hoping our number one pick is Jordan Davis, defensive tackle out of Alabama. I mean, this guy may be the first nose tackle since who? Who, JT? Come on, tell me. Snacks. Snacks. Oh, this guy, Mark Casey Hampton. This guy <laughs> is going to go ahead and push the pocket. He's going to close the holes. He's going to stop running down our throat. He's going to give Devin Bush and Miles a chance to actually play middle linebacker. And mm. by the good grace of the Lord up above, he falls to us and Desmond Ritter's there. Kyle Pickett's there. Or not Kyle Pickett. What's his name, Pickett? Hey, you know what I'm talking Kenny. about. Kenneth. It, it, Kenneth. Kenneth Pickett. All of those quarterbacks are sitting there, and the Steelers are going to restrain themselves. And they're going to say, you know what? Jordan Davis is the guy we need to get. If not, I'll be all right with Desmond Ritter. But... By God, let's attack the trenches like we've been talking about, JT. So do you think he will replace Stefan Tuit? Or will he grow behind Stefan Tuit? No, I think he will be in addition to the three man rotation that they have dreamed about between Alalu, Cam, and Tuit, and be that nice rookie young blood to bring in with our other guy. Do you remember him? He's kind of milky. (laughs) Louder, louder and louder and louder. louder I think it'll, it'll go ahead and sure up that defensive line to where we need it to be because we're going to need our defense next year. With the offensive changes and the quarterback changes, we're going to need that defensive line shirt up. And if Jordan falls to us, we've got to take him. And trust me, this was hard because Chris Olave is still on the board. And my God, that kid can catch. He is going to be something else. But Jordan Davis is my pick, even though they're going to take Ritter. You know, we both got both you and I have guessed over Lave. We both know that that's not a Steelers pick in the situation. And I can't sit here and disagree with anything you said about Jordan Davis. He tours up their own defense. He automatically makes the linebackers better. And they haven't had someone inside like him since Casey Hampton. So, I mean, if if Jordan Davis is there and Linderbaum's there, I can't get upset about either one of them. I can't. Now, if they take Ritter, the next podcast after the draft is going to be an all-time meltdown from my point of view. But... <laughs> But no, why would I, I can that be live a meltdown with... if it was Ritter? Why would it be a meltdown? Well, because the main reason why is every I've I've, I've listened to other podcasts and you know they try to cover up his warts. Here's here's pretty much the reason why I'm against Ritter. A, he played in a smaller conference, which isn't so the end all be all. So did Big Man. Uh, hold hold on. And, but here, let me tie everything together. In the first half of most of his games, he struggled. Um, if you look at the stats, you'll see that. He'll come up overwired, whatever. 
He played in an RPO system. He did a great job keeping his eyes downfield in that, so I will give him that. But at the same time, he would make throws that you watch and you're like, what the fuck was the heck? Not a, that's not a first round quarterback. Hell, I'm high on Kenny Pickett, and I don't, I don't think he's a first round quarterback. And don't get me started on fucking Willis. Well, let's be just honest. let's 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 draft some linemen, O line, D line, first round. Let's be done. And let's be honest, not one of these quarterbacks are first round quarterbacks this year. Period. No matter how much hype. How much blow up? None of these cats go first round in any other year. Oh, hey, Pickett look, might go must late. Have said Pickett, something that was right. Pickett, Pickett might go late first round. These other not guys with eight, not with eight and a half inch hands. He's not. Well, if he had manscaped, it might look like ten inch hands. <laughs> anyway, good point, CJ. <laughs> That's true. Um, he should have done the sculpting routine. <laughs> well, gentlemen. Breaking sure, news just, just, just in. The Browns have released Baker Mayfield and the Steelers have made a trade. Deontay for Baker Mayfield? No, nope. Steelers just picked him up and gave the Browns. Uh, they gave him a draft pick for next year. First round Please draft pick. Some... Oh, no, no, no. Not a first round. Really? <laughs> is, that, is that what we gave up, JT? Yep. No, I'm sorry. I just had to have some fun with that. <laughs> Well, it's funny that you should say that, JT, because... I'm over here Googling shit, trying to figure it out. Because <laughs> I, I, I seriously don't know if you're fucking with us or being serious. Well, no, seriously. Well, apparently, I mean, this is the night to do that, so... And honestly, I don't know if you guys all seen it, but it's already been released that if he was cut tomorrow, he would come to their rival. Now... He's not replacing Lamar Jackson. He's not replacing Joe Burrow. That only leaves us. Oh, well, look at you guys. I've got you guys quiet. It, it, did you guys hear the mice running across I the floor? I would rather try. I would rather try out Mason Rudolph. I know you were waiting for I'm just, us. I thought you were just I'm, like, I'm going to have to walk away people. to even think about this for a second. That's, no, don't. Don't even entertain this. <laughs> Don't. Okay, folks. The guys, no. What we call fake news. Well, we've just <laughs> probably lost about 99% of our listeners. So, all for those seven second, remaining listeners. All before the second round, JT? Uh, yeah, I think we're headed that way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, well, let's flip it around. And uh, let, let's start for... The 52nd pick overall in round two, the Pittsburgh Steelers refer to the famous TA for pick number 52 in the second round. Oh, JT, in the second round, we pick up a stud out of Mike Tomlin's favorite college to go ahead and draft from the University of Maryland, Nick Cross safety. Woo! Now I tell you what, this kid is a little bit of a stud, man. Six one, four five in the in 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 the in the in the forty. I mean, he is a ballpark. He is a special player. However, 
if we do not do Jordan Davis in the first round and we do go with Desmond Ritter, then we've got to pick up his sidekick, Fedarian Matthias, defensive lineman, to go ahead and fill that spot. But I think I'm we're liking just... this. I'm liking that Nick Cross kid. Yeah, I think we're kind of on the same page here. Um, hit the music. <laughs> hit the music, JT. <laughs> the pick is in. In the Steelers and draft, the second round for CJ. Steelers draft Auburn corner Roger McCreary. I really do think the second round um, is going to be um, secondary based. I don't. I didn't know. I had. I had the guy from Maryland on there originally, and then I read a little more into Mister McQuery. McQuery. I'm going to call him Roger. Much easier. Good <laughs> Roger, size Roger. for corner. Can we have clearance? Good clearance? size. <laughs> Good size. <laughs> Good size. He tackles well. That's what she right? said. He kind. Of, I don't know. If, it might work. Anyway. But he tackled well, and he kind of fits that Ike Taylor mold of kind of the last good sa- last last good corner that they drafted a long time ago. They where couldn't catch physical. Who was that? No, was something like not. Chad Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, how far back are we going here? <laughs> Ike Taylor, a long time I, ago. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Stone Hands was the best cornerback we drafted. Stonehenge? I would, I, I would say so. Oh my Since God. I've been born, think about that oh. one. But no, <laughs> JT, I don't know what to say. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I do think there is a need at safety, and I think your pick, my pick, either way. But I, I do like his uh, size. He played in the SEC. He was a shutdown guy for Auburn. That's good enough for me. Yeah. There you go. All right. All right. I, well, I, I like it. Secondary in the second round. Second round, secondary. Makes sense. Makes sense. And let's hope we have some good luck. All I'm right. Grab, well, grab my charger real quick. Just keep going. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll go ahead and flip back over. So Steelers uh, in the third round will pick. Number 84, so go ahead while he's grabbing his charger, T.A., for the Steelers' third-round pick, number 84 overall. The kid I like, man, and I don't know if he's going to be there, but it's Chad Muma, linebacker out of Wyoming. This kid is a little bit underrated. He is a stud of a guy. I mean, and I think that he would do a pretty good job of an upgrade of what we have, JT. However, if we do decide to not pick safety in the second, I look for us to turn to the University of Cincinnati for Brian Cook because that kid had a stellar year as well as a safety. And as I go ahead and I buy time because our boy who had to get up to get the charger who left the draft, Mel would be going ape shit at this time. I will go ahead and <laughs> fill in. Brian Cook is six foot two, two hundred and ten pounds, ran a forty of five point five four. He is projected in the third to fourth of round. And The only coach's criticism that he has is he's an average athlete by NFL defensive back standards. CJ, take it away. Hold on. I was just about to say, you know what's awesome when you watch the ESPN draft and all everything else? How great every player that's drafted. (laughs) What's that? That the lights didn't go out like they did at your place? Exactly. But how great every player drafted this. Anyway, for me, 
hit the music. Oh, you're right. CJ, oh my God, Brian Cook, he was awesome. Did you see him at the University of Cincinnati? The guy was a ball hawk. His average size is six foot seven, and he was just all over the place. He had like octopus arms, and he couldn't catch anything, but he caught. All right, proceed. <laughs> Quarterback from Nevada. <gasps> Strong. Who? Who? I like Carson Strong. Quarterback oh, come from on, Nevada. DJ, really? Yes. Dude, really. The guy has no this mobility. The... No mobility. Oh, hey, 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 hey. None. Zero. Zilch. You're telling me that you're just wanting to see Canada fired? Well, we all are. But I mean, this will definitely be the nail in his coffin. Dude can't miss. <laughs> what do you mean he can't miss? He couldn't hit the broadside of a barn if he was standing in front of it. This is the ultimate hedge pick for the Steelers towards the future. Hedge. Oh, we got another guy. It's 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 exactly like the Mason Rudolph pick, third round quarterback who has high upside, all this stuff. However, there is well, you shit on his mobility, and I understand about that. <laughs> there is something to like. The dude has an arm. The dude has a legit NFL arm. He's got the size. He's put up. He's looked good on tape. All right. Yeah, he might be an old school throwback type quarterback. And there's one thing about the NFL. It's a copycat leg, right? What better time to zig while everyone else is zagging and take a chance on this kid? It's third round pick. I mean, Christ. Uh, they they burn him. <coughs> Sorry. They burn up third round picks every year. To people that. So this will just be the latest in a long lineage of yeah. Colbert failures in the third round. Carson no, he, he he has been successful in third round, such as James Conner. Um, trying to think who else. Anyway, that's recently. But and there you go, Steelers Nation. That's all you need to know. Out of twenty some years as a Steelers GM, James Conner. Fair enough. That was off the top of my head. <laughs> but come on, for a third round pick, why okay, not take the chance? do worse. Yeah. All right. Before we move yeah. on, a um, little break in the action here. Uh, did you see the post here recently about Dwayne Haskins that apparently he did run out of gas and was going to get gas? Um, yeah, I saw that. 911 call, and uh, according to his wife, a statement from his wife. So, um, you know, it's more, we knew we'd find out more as time went on. So, but. Makes me feel a lot better. Yes. Not and that a little more any of this makes you feel better, but yes. Um, a little better about that yeah, it was an accident. Exactly. Not anything else. Uh, brought on too so <clears throat> well let's continue on guys we're on a roll here uh let's see uh round three complete so it's time to move on to round four uh, which is the 138th pick overall so uh let's go ahead with famous ta what do you got it's CJ's turn. Why does it always have to be TA? Ah, oh, we're going back and forth here. And I just took the third round and the second. It's like round. a, it's like a snake. No, you know? no, no. It's like a snake draft. Just yeah, like a I snake got draft. one. You get two, three. I'll take you know four or five. No, you get <laughs> you get two. Anyway, <laughs> two, and then he'll get three, and then TA you'll get three. You'll get three you B. Did you forget he had to get up? leave the audience to go charge in the middle of his pick. I had to take it for him because he was out of bush latte. <laughs> Anheuser-Busch, if you need someone to uh, 
sponsor Bush Light, I'm here for you. But I'll take it with this one because this is a no-brainer that I even know that TA is going to agree with. Running back from Notre Dame, Kyron Williams. Listen, Najee was the focal point of the offense all year last year, and he made a difference. But at some point, you can't rely on him to have that many touches and stay healthy. Kyron at Notre Dame showed potential flashes, so on and so forth, and he put together great seasons. Two, let me rephrase that, one good season, one above-average season. Nothing that says screams first or second round, but you see the potential there that he could be a good backup to Najee. Because when Najee got hurt or Najee wasn't in the game, we're, lo- we're relying on second string blowjob technicians that <laughs> have no chance, right? When they're in the game, they're passing. He brings a different element to the game. I would, uh, he's my pick. Bring him in. No brainer. A plus. There you have it. Cue the music. I'm just going to sit back and play the music. You guys go ahead. You're doing a great job, JT. (laughs) Now, CJ, I'm going to have to agree with you. I agree we have to go in the fourth fourth round for our offensive pick. However, I'm not quite sure I'm ready to go running back yet. Just yet. I think we, we can get running back later in the rounds. My choice, however, is we need a little offensive tackle. And I think Nicholas Piet Freire out of Ohio State needs to go ahead and accompany our other French guy, Lugaloo. <laughs> and this guy is an offensive tackle, 6'5", 310 pounds. He's going to need some work. He's going to need some polish. Do I ever see him as a true NFL starter? Probably not. But do I see him as a suitable backup? I do. However, with the latest and greatest, and of course, the draft or the trade was all real or fake or real or fake. I'm not sure. I'm thinking Justin Ross, wide receiver out of Clemson, six foot four, 210 pounds. This cat's going to fill in right where. Our boy, who left us, who said he was Pittsburgh true and true, Juju, left off. Don't hate it. Don't hate any of either of those options at all. I'm a big believer if you're good enough to play offensive line in Ohio State, there's a chance that you're going to be able to make an impact at the NFL level. Justin Ross, he put together – I believe he had two really good seasons and was it his junior year that he got hurt and had some concussion issues. And he just, last year, he just never showed the growth, right? And, you know, he, he had, it was serious concussion issues, but those first two years at Clemson playing with Trevor Lawrence, the guy was a beast. He's got size, he's got speed, he's got the hands. It's all whether he can, you know, come back and get over that injury. Again, wouldn't hate either of them. Wouldn't hate either of them. And there you have Sealers Nation. Going into the fifth round is where T.A. takes his nap. Please (laughs) wake him once it is over so we can hear the Cue it up, JT. And your sixth round pick, Steelers Nation, that you've been excited and waiting for, dying, earning, wanting that quarterback of the future, Chris Oldham, quarterback, South Dakota State. Now, this draft was acquired. And... 
for whatever reason, this cat is on the Steelers radar. Now I'm kind of me personally, I'm thinking the Steelers can go ahead and go ahead and run out the draft. And this guy is going to be available to pick up as a free agent. But somewhere deep inside my belly, since they felt that it was dire need to go ahead and interview this cat privately, bring him into the south side, that they have some plans for this kid. Now, me personally, I would go ahead and take Romeo Dulds, wide receiver out of Nevada. But do not be surprised if this isn't where we pick up our quarterback. Mm-hmm. Can't can't disagree with them taking quarterback this late. Ultimate, as I've said before, someone needs to throw passes to these wide receivers. Yeah. All right, PJ, for your sixth pick, Devin Tompkins, Brown. wide receiver, Utah State. So this guy, he's he's small. He's five eight. He weighs one hundred sixty pounds. Special teams. Exactly. <laughs> Straight line speed. Speed. But we just got Gunner. Hey, every Gunner <laughs> needs a, another Gunner or something. I don't know. I don't you know. Need a backup Gunner to the Gunner. So everyone needs that. Okay. No, but in all seriousness, here's a guy that if you draft them and you put them in a situation like special teams, which is what they're going to – this is what the Steelers do laying around. They find people that can fill needs like this. I think we just lost that uh, JT. Anyway, you know what? Me and you can run it from here. Tompkins, hey, he's got straight line speed. He's a small guy. Best – Best case scenario, he becomes a slot wide receiver. Worst case scenario, hey, he's the guy lined up outside on puck coverage. It's what the Steelers do. What they it is do. what the Steelers do. And this is a late round pick, and this is that pick that you're looking at just filling a roster and hoping the kid does stick. Oh, my God. Whew. JT, the split view stuff. I hope you got nobody skinny there. Whoa, whoa, whoa. I hope nobody watching is on Southdellus LSD because this is getting trippy. <laughs> but in all seriousness, though, this guy at Nevada with Carson's not Carson's song, with there, he averaged about seventeen yards a game, uh, seventeen yards of reception. He made an impact. If he was six foot tall. Everyone would be saying second, third round pick. Well, you know, CG, I can't, I can't disagree with you. The one thing is, I know we've named off a couple of wide receivers, but let's face it, the Steelers have a great knack of finding that diamond in the rough in some small school college that we've never heard of, i.e., Deontay Johnson, Antonio mm-hmm. Brown, that all of a sudden. We pick up, and it's a superstar. So I, I can't disagree with you that we couldn't turn this kid into a superstar. It's been a long time, though, since we've had a 5'8 receiver. And I'm going to raise a question to JT. Do you remember who that was? What was the question again? <laughs> Sorry, folks. He was napping. He thought it was the fifth round. Who was the last short wide receiver at five foot eight that we had? Wallace. Mike Wallace. Mike Wallace. He wasn't no five foot eight. Mike was pretty tall. Hines. Come on now. Hines was not five foot eight. <laughs> All right, you got me. I don't know. All right. Since I you just love JT, since this is stumped the JT, here's what I want from you, Steelers Nation. That's it. I want you to I want you to reach out to our website at Steelers 
realm.com. Send us an email. I want to hear what your thought is on our last short wide receiver. And we will let you know because I already know he came from a small school, very, very small school. We had kind of high hopes as a returner for him. Never really turned out or panned out as a receiver. But Dr. Dre would have loved him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I can't know. I don't know what else to tell you. Shall we move on? Yes, because yes. this is the important round right here, JT. This, this is, is the one. And final round. This is the one. Thank goodness for the Jets to allow us to have this pick. Because without a JT, we might have been screwed. Because this here could be mystery relevant for the Pittsburgh Steelers. <laughs> no, we have one more. There's one more round. After the seventh round, there's another round. Is there something to change in the NFL draft that I don't know about? Well, we have the 241st pick in the eighth round. So I guess, I don't know. <laughs> unless, I'm missing, unless the Steelers' site is wrong here that's and everything a, else. That's a rumor, right? <laughs> Cue the music, maestro. Anyway. CJ, you're on the board. I'm going to keep it pretty close to what they did last round as they're going to hedge their bet. Wide you're receiver. acting like this is a damn dog race. It is. It is. Are, are you That's talking to the chief? Is that what you're doing? You having subliminal messages with the chief? <laughs> I, I I'm placing anyway. a wide receiver out of, you know, you know it's state. At a hundred to one. <laughs> anyway, Ty Fryfogel University. Ty who? In Fryfogel. Fryfogel University. Yes, University of Indiana. I can't wait to see that on ABC. <laughs> Ty Fryfogel, the United States. I mean, University of what was that again? Indiana. Indiana. Here's a guy that's a little bit older that hurts his draft stock. He took he took his COVID year. Um, he probably should have came out prior to COVID as a true junior. He had a great season in an offense that was electric. Um, the best team that Indiana football has had in, who, who knows, 40 years, 50 years. I don't know when the last time they've been good. But he came back. He had a quarterback injury that hurt his numbers. And then this year, Indiana football was an absolute joke. But he still put up consistent numbers, but the only thing that changed was he continued to get older. If, he, if the Steelers took this guy in the fifth round, I would be like, I get it. I see it. He's ex he's explosive. It just comes down to he's already older than me. Which well, is CJ, you've, you're only twelve. Oh, fair enough. Fair fair enough. All right, and, and Ty, I, I'll give you that, CJ. Ty is not bad. I mean, he is a solid ball tracker. I mean. The kid is always where the ball needs to be. And he probably is underrated coming out of the Big Ten. Didn't come from a school that would highlight his assets. However, in the seventh round, that's not what we do. Oh, no, wait a second. It is what we do. We come from a small school. My pick is, JT, cue the music. 
You sure? You ready? No, I'm not ready. Hold on a second. Let me take a deep <laughs> breath. <sighs> okay, cue the music. Here's CJ where we pick up our running back. This kid out of Cincinnati, because I got a feeling we're going to pick up a couple of Cincinnati kids this draft. Don't ask me why. I just have this feeling. But it's Jerome Ford running back out of Cincinnati. I think he'll be a great compliment to our boy, Najee, coming in on third. It'll make Anthony McFarland obsolete. It might even give Benny Snell a reason to go ahead and just walk away from football because Benny football is not who he's been. And by the way, since we don't have one Edmonds coming back, we're probably not going to have the other Edmonds coming back. So we need somebody to pick that up and nothing like running an old Ford. I mean, it's a Ford, you know, it's not necessarily first on race day. It's fix or repair daily, but we're only asking him to go ahead and, you know, come in on spot delivery. If not, there is this kid out of Appalachian state. And you know how we like our small schools. This kid's going to be a project and that'll be, DeMarco Jackson, linebacker. DeMarco seems like a nice and yeah, nice special teams guy. Jerome Ford, I could 100% get behind him right now. Do it. I've watched Cincinnati play way too many college football games, more than I would like to admit. Especially, especially this year. For, especially for a guy coming out of Pennsylvania. What are you telling yeah. me? You you a secret Bengals fan? Do you have Joe Burrow's private number? I, if I did, I would leak it to like some obscure Reddit. If I for could. a good time call. I can't hate. <laughs> listen, I can't. I can't hate. Can, Tia, can you hate Joe Burrow? Like, can you? Because he seems like a no. cool dude. Look, I tell you what. If Joe was on our team, I the Steelers Nation would rally around him like there was no tomorrow. There, there's no doubt about it in my mind. I mean, Cincinnati's got them a quarterback. And I'm a little jelly. Is, is that what the kids say nowadays? Jelly instead of jealous? I'm a little jelly. And, no, and, and, I had, if I had Joe Mixon's number, that shit would be posted on every weird fucking Reddit. That I can find. <laughs> anyway, well, anyway, Jerome Ford. I like it. I I do. I I and at the end of this, we I think we all agree on this. The Steelers line they need to get better, right? They need a linebacker somewhere. They need to back up the nausea. And I think they need to hedge their bet at quarterback, but. I don't think that will actually happen. And God damn, can we get another wide receiver in the room? Right. We need a camp arm. I, I think yeah. we need to run with who we have now. I don't think we need to reach for a quarterback this year. I don't think we need to draft up to get or, you know, move up in the draft to get it. I don't, if those quarterbacks are all gone, I'm not going to lose any sleep over it. I agree with you, CJ. Let's run with the quarterback room we have. Let's, paying this out next year and if we go i don't know let's say four and 12 or four and 13 then hallelujah that puts us right in the prime spot yep. to pick up one of the kids next year because you know, that's I, the quarterback class not I, this year forget about what all the nfl pundits have went ahead and tried to throw down our throats to make this exciting to make this glamorous we don't need it but if we were, I would be okay with Desmond Ritter. And the only reason I say that is, is because he kind of reminds me of Ben. The kid's just a winner. He doesn't know how to lose. He's not pretty. He's not the greatest. He's not the most nimblest. But he knows how to win. He's got that attitude. And we've stated this before on the show. It's about attitude. I, I, you Take away all the physical attributes. I mean... 
Dan Marino had all the physical attributes. How many Super Bowls did he win? Exactly. So with that being said, I'm not going to lose any sleep if we pick up Chris out of Utah because this is, or I'm sorry, Chris, not Utah, South Dakota. Same thing. It's cold up there, and I hope you have a fur coat. I mean, if they pick him up for a camp arm, they pick him up for a camp arm. If this is the kid that they fell in love with, you know, as a backup, great. Bring him in. Let's let's not go reaching. As far as filling needs, let's fill needs. Let's use this draft. What we need is the fill needs. Now, one thing I want to go ahead and mention, I'm going to just rattle off a list real quick, CJ, and you tell me if you disagree with any of these guys that I feel right now could also be on our radar that we did not go ahead and mention. First of all, Joey Blunt, a.k.a. Mel Blunt's son. <clears throat> Sorry, I didn't want to get you guys all excited. There's no relationship. Safety out of Virginia. Steelers have been known to have a little private conversation with him. Hasin Haskins, running back out of Michigan. See, I think if I think if they go late five through seven at running back, I think he's going to be their guy. Uh, just because, and and here's what here's what's underrated about him is he played obviously for Harbaugh. He's played in the NFL. He's pl- already played in the NFL offense. He knows blocking assignments from the get go. What's the thing about uh, these? Fuck it. I'll say the word again. Blowjob technicians that they're running out now, that Benny Snell and all these oh. other clowns, they can't block. They can't block. They can't pass protect. They don't know shifts. So I, I would love him. I would be very happy with him. For a third down back, he's not a bad choice. Then Marcus Jones, cornerback out of Houston. Eric Johnson, defensive tackle out of Missouri State. One cat that I don't think he's going to make it out of the first round is Boy Mafe, defensive end out of Minnesota. This cat's starting to gain a lot of traction. He was definitely underrated, but now all of a sudden he's climbing the draft boards. I'd love to see him pick up him. James Kaskoski, linebacker out of Clemson. Quay Walker, linebacker out of Georgia. Or even Nick Benito, outside linebacker out of Oklahoma. A wide receiver that hasn't got very much mention either is Bo Melton, wide receiver out of Rutgers. Or, I'm sorry, Rutgers. Rutgers doesn't then, have a football school, so who cares? He doesn't count. <laughs> he doesn't count. He doesn't and then count. We're gonna, and then we're going to go ahead and we're going to give three names that are attributed to the Steelers family. And whether this be picking them in the draft or even signing them more as a free agent. And that would be AKA Quentin Lake, son of Carnell Lake, safety out of UCLA. Connor Hayward, who we've already heard, tight end slash halfback slash fullback, or I'm sorry, H-back slash, slash fullback out of Michigan State. And here's something that Steelers Nation would love to hear is coming out of USC, the nephew of Troy Palomalu, Isaiah. Just some names to go ahead and keep your eye on, Steelers Nation, that may just go ahead and pop up after draft day. So I got three... Alternatives. Alternatives. You know what I'm saying. Three alternates. Alternates? Yeah, to think about uh, from my picks. That if they go a completely different route. route. Sky Moore, wide receiver from one of the directional Michigan schools. I believe Western. Western Michigan? Yep. Okay. Leo Chanel in the second. A linebacker from the uh, from Wisconsin. He's already got the size. He's already got the pedigree. All right, and then if they get a little frisky when it comes to running back, 
just because they value nausea so much, uh, Damian Pierce from Florida. Out of Florida? Yes. I'm not sure if I know anything about him. Expand a he's, little bit, please. Uh, he's. Let me pull it up here for you. So he's another COVID senior. He's a little older. Um, <laughs> shouldn't have done this, but anyway, he's five <laughs> ten. He's five ten. Put him on the spot. Yeah, five ten, two hundred pounds. More of a pass catching uh, running back, third down back, with good speed. Um, third round pick. He would be conf- sadly. I would compare him to Anthony Anthony McFarland. Who's that again? Anthony McFarland. I haven't heard of that kid before. Yeah, talk about another waste pick. You know, the running back from Maryland a few years back. <laughs> Someone's gonna All right. It. Well, Steelers Nation, you've heard it. Our mock draft which JT has now been totally and utterly quiet throughout the entire scene. JT, your thoughts. Come to us. Give us some music. JT, who who won between uh, TA and I? In your (laughs) opinion. (laughs) Who won between what? What? The most bullshit, or the, the most bullshit. Or, there you go. The JT. most realistic pick. I don't know. Well, let's steal a nation uh, vote on that one. So, uh, but anyhow, thank you, gentlemen, for all your work and and uh, insight. So now we don't even have to go through the draft. We can just go ahead and sign those picks and and uh, get the season started. I'm excited. In the trove. In yes. the trove. Uh, training camp. You know, Can't wait for you know, that. A little, a little birdie told me we're doing something kind of exciting next week that's a little different. What birdie are you talking to? Is he blue? Uh, Do you have a blue bird uh, on your shoulder? Yeah. Breast small. The, right. the mighty black and gold eagle. I'm just saying what, yes, what a little birdie told me. If If we can pull it off. Another mega podcast coming up for a live uh, broadcast during draft night next week, Thursday night. Tune in, Steeler Nation, uh, for our uh, analysis of the first uh, picks so far in the draft. We're going to be joining a writer in around number 10, reviewing the first 10 picks of the NFL draft. We're going to be doing this live on our Facebook and uh, YouTube pages. And uh, we're going to be getting together with uh, the Triple B uh, podcast again for another mega podcast. And this time we're going to go live uh, as the draft proceeds. And we're going to be bringing those picks to you and our thoughts and analysis as we go right up through uh, pick number 20, which is the Steelers pick. So we're looking forward to getting getting into that with you guys Does that mean and bringing that Bubba to you live. Bubba, Bubba and Cable? Bub and Cable, and I think Gary's going to be out that week. He's he's out that week, next week. I just want to know, JT, is the superheroes going to join us? I'm sure they will be there. Oh, you got to tune in for the superheroes. So anyhow, Steeler Nation, uh, it's been a pleasure. Gentlemen, thank you for your insight. Look for us there, and don't forget manscaped.com. Go out there to pick up your... uh, your manly uh, treatments and uh, get your ball shaved right. He doesn't want to say it. I'll say it. Get your ball <laughs> shaved right. It's going to make you yeah. happy. It's going to make her happy. Everyone wins. That's it. Check Go it out. out. Mans- Manscaped.com. Check it out. When you check out Realm, what is it? Realm 20? Realm 20. Realm 20, Realm 20 is a special, Promotion. special discount. Yep. Use it. That's it. All right, Steeler Nation. Hey, River Derchi, have a great rest of your week, everyone. Gentlemen, been a pleasure as always. Careful in the hot tub. 
We'll see you guys next time. Steelers Nation. Alrighty. Your balls will thank you. That's all you got? That's all I got. I just wanted them to know that at Rome 20, their balls will thank them. Hey. Steelers Nation. The Pirates are only one and a half back. Who? 148 to play. Who? Stay positive. Who? Raise the job, Stay Roger. positive. How about the Penguins? Hey, playoffs coming. Check back next week into the Steelers' realm. Go Big Bang.